the story of Kanika Jenkins is tragic, disturbing, and shrouded in mysteries. Kanika was only 19 years old when her body was found dead inside of a walk-in freezer at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Rosemont, Illinois. Kanika was celebrating a party with her friends that night when she mysteriously vanished. Her friends had no idea where she had gone and had reported her disappearance to the hotel's management and then later to Kanika's mother. At around 3.20 a.m., security footage surfaced showing what appeared to be Kanika stumbling throughout the hallways and front desk. Security footage later showed Kanika entering a kitchen and then disappearing out of the camera's view. This was the last time Kanika was seen alive. Two days later, Kanika was found by police inside the freezer and was pronounced dead. The cause of death was ruled to be due to hypothermia. The autopsy report showed that Kanika's blood alcohol level was 0.112. This was way over the limit of what would have been considered legally drunk in the state of Chicago. But the mysterious part was that she had traces of a drug called Topramate, which is used to treat epilepsy, migraines, and headaches. Kanika was not prescribed this drug, and it's unknown how it got in her system. When taken with alcohol, Topramate is known to hasten the onset of hypothermia, which is ultimately what Kanika died from. These findings have led many to believe that Kanika had been murdered rather than her death being merely an accident. Police insist that no foul play was at work, but many around the world, including Kanika's own mother, believe otherwise. Furthermore, when Kanika's friends were questioned about what happened that night, their stories didn't match up. They would constantly change their stories relating to what happened after Kanika went missing. Today, I attempt to get in contact with Kanika's spirit and see what she has to say about this tragic day. Is anybody able to help me get in contact with Kanika tonight? <laughs> Go into the light. You want to help Kanika move on into the light? That was a weird message. I think that was a spirit reply. I'll have to look into that. Kanika, you can come through and use this device to speak. You don't have to be afraid. This can't hurt you. You have many people who are saddened about what happened to you, Kanika. I'm going to switch to clearer settings for you. Let me know if this is a little too difficult for you. Are you able to talk about that night, Kanika? Thinking about it, John and him, and family, and Kanika, are you able to come through and talk about what happened that night? Alright, so I'm now going to switch the pedals to one that'll hopefully allow Kanika to come through in a more natural sounding voice and less of a spooky one. Uh, this may be a little bit difficult for her, but we will see how she does using these settings. Hi Kanika, I hope that this is working for you a little bit better now. I messed with some of the settings. The light, you seem to mention that quite a bit this session, Kanika. You can use the energy from this bracelet that I have here. It has a lot of natural healing stones on it for protection. I got this from one of our lovely members on the channel, Bianca. Can you remember what happened to you that night, Kanika? I know it was probably very hard to remember anything that night, Kanika. What kind of things can you remember from that night, Kanika? Is that something you're willing to come through and tell us? I'm getting shoved 
around. Wow, I heard that clearly. Thank you so much, Kanika. You were sick. Many people think that this was a murder, Kanika. Do you think you were murdered? Some people. That's right, you were at a party that night, Kanika. That's fine, Kanika. Thank you for coming through and telling us what you do know. Everybody here really appreciates that. I know you had alcohol in your system that night, along with a drug used to treat epilepsy, headaches, and migraines. This drug was not prescribed to you. Do you know how that got in your system, Kanika? That's right, you can come through, you can use my energy, Kanika. Were you knowingly taking these drugs, or do you think somebody could have slipped it in your drink that night at the party? A pill, I think I heard? I'm not sure, I may be incorrect. On the security footage, you appeared to be stumbling for quite a ways until you got to the freezer. Can you tell us how you ended up there, Kanika? Was somebody calling your name or, or leading you there? Many people have asked the question, how could somebody who was so heavily intoxicated have the strength to open a door so heavy and large it looks like you could barely stand up at some points in the footage kanika how did you manage to get that door open is there anything else you wish to say about that night kanika anything you want us to know yeah yeah you can come through Everybody can hear this message, including your parents, if they choose to watch this. Yes, Kanika, um, I believe it was the police. They, they found your body in the freezer, unfortunately. It says online that your friends' stories were inconsistent as to what happened after you went missing. Do you think that one of them may have had something to do with it, or do you think that the stories were inconsistent due to the fact that they may have been intoxicated? <laughs> if this was a murder, do you think that they will catch whoever did this to you? I I know you asked earlier if your family could say that uh, they loved you. Um, they're unfortunately, they're not here with me right now to be able to say that. Um, but if you have any messages for them at all, they can definitely hear this video and uh, hear whatever messages you have for them, Kanika. <laughs> Do you have any messages for your loved ones or family, Kanika? <laughs> Something about crossed over. Thank you so much, Kanika, for coming through and speaking with us tonight. I will do whatever I can to try and get your message out there on the internet for people to see and hopefully to help bring justice to what happened to you that night.